Okay, so we are on 14.2. Reason why we see karma is because of malignance, karma, and karma buffs. Uh, no Jace, no Callista, no Maokai, and no Akali for JoJo. No Lucian or Ash. Uh, Berserker, obviously on the Ashes, has been historically rather important. Ezreal got some buffs on this patch as well. Um, so interesting to see him. Like, you know, meaningful, small but... Small but meaningful buffs. Uh, Oriana's still going to be an absolute monster. Uh, why doesn't anybody in NA play Corky? It has not been nerfed. How does Monty survive in Asian culture? Well, here's the thing about being a white guy in Asian culture. You're already the barbarian, so they just think it's funny when you, like, are cocky. I'm not held to Korean cultural standards, guys. They're just like, oh, look at that barbarian. He's so cute. so curious you know if that Varus gets locked in what will immortals answer be do they just say you know what we're sacking lane and we're gonna play like bard and roam and good luck you know you're gonna be farming one yeah. v2 on the ezreal or do you try to match fire with fire here and go something that can really scrap in lane try to get aggressive in that too okay so karma Varus, and rel Yeah. Yeah, this is they're already trying to hide this, right? Solo could be solo lane or support karma. This could be support or jungle for Rel. And I mean, I don't think Varus is going to be flexed, but Varus top is actually getting played some. Uh people are playing kind of the tank Varus top and things like that. Uh, I've even seen a little bit of Varus mid, so uh, All right, I'm excited. Is in fact the bard that I did mention. Okay, so bard. It's going to be less about playing for lane. Bard is not a horrible laner by any means, but it's trying to catch out the back line here. Yone in his ear, so trying to pinch the champion pool right now of Jojo. Trying to Trundle a Nocturne. And it will be the Tristana lane instead. So Rel in the jungle. And Udyr in the top side. We have been seeing more of the Aatrox into Udyr, especially in Korea, with, with some pretty good success, honestly. We've seen Aatrox, like, actually win lane versus the Udyr. And it will be Ivern. Uh, so we do have pretty strong objective control with the Ivern. Uh, and pretty strong zone control with Daisy and Oriana Ball, as well as uh, Bard Ult. Uh, good flanking here from the Aatrox. And on the other side, you know, there is a strong front line with the Udyr. And you have, you know, the Karma is going to provide some, some good AP damage, as will the Udyr. So it's not quite as unbalanced as you might think. Um, and then... You also have, of course, the double AD composition. So really strong siege uh, coming in from C9. Good front line with Udyr and Rel, as well as good disengage by being able to add move speed with Karma um, for kiting, right? This composition will be vulnerable to flanks. Hard to flank, but will be vulnerable to potential Aatrox flanks, or if there's a good Bard ult and everybody gets on top of the back line. Thank you, Light, for your tier one subscription. Aatrox winning lane versus Udyr is just the Udyr being bad. It has been a, it has been a repeated phenomenon in LCK that the Aatroxes have been either beating or going even in lane with Udyr. Oh, Light, as a reminder, uh, need that because he, Light does some work for Esports Bet. Shout out to Esports Bet. Also, shout out to the fact that uh, Degon called the IMT win and got f like 5.0 odds. No joke, guys. He got like 5.0 odds on IMT. It was crazy. Um, Light, I need that uh, updated window for 
um, comp edge. Just as a reminder. And if I could get a window with 4SI as well, that would be very helpful. Thank you, sir. Also one for Power Spike if you feel like it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Dom also hit his parlay of G2, BDS, Vitality, Fnatic, also with over five odds. So the only one who didn't hit his crazy bet was me trying to get Shopify Rebellion to 3-0 on Super Week. I did get the Shopify over NRG one, though. I did get that one, <laughs> but I didn't get the parlay. However... The other two were like five to one. The the Shopify parlay was thirteen to one. So if you had, if I had hit that, it would have been crazy. More heavily to scale. His job is going to be able to more try to cover where Blabber is going, right? Try to okay. anticipate where counter the gank. rel is going to be. Look for counter ganks because I do think if the Ivern absorbs that engage, shows up all of a sudden, you know, Blabber flashes in, and all of a sudden Ivern steps out of the bush and shields you. you um, do you think we're going to see Smolder played in competitive when he's enabled? I don't know yet. Um. I haven't had a I haven't had enough time to to take a look at that uh, smolder yet, guys. So I don't have an opinion on that yet. Is playoffs top six? Yes. Things like the Arden sensor become that much more valuable because you can AOE apply them to your team. You know, get that additional attack speed for the whole squad. So it's going to be an interesting one. Having a, a guy who just wants to run at people in Udyr, also loving those AOE mantras, keeping him pasted up, being even more of a threat on top of some of those targets. Yes, YouTube chat. Croak Madame is a million times better than a Monte Cristo. This is what I'm talking about. There's never a point to ordering the Monte Cristo sandwich, ever. There's always something better. Experience. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it. All right, come on, let's get into this game. By the way, the just as a shout out to the LCS viewing experience, the pre-recorded drafts have worked amazingly well. Doesn't disrupt anything, just makes getting into games faster. Very good idea. It's Marxie's best idea since uh, stopping going on Hotline League. Would you go to Cast Worlds if Riot magically ever invited you again? Anything's possible for the right amount of money in public apologies. But neither of those, thing, those things will ever happen, so you don't have to worry about it. So this is a very playable composition for C9. You know, it doesn't smack of the Shopify Rebellion loss, where it really just felt like Giga Draft Gap. You know, the Karma's been been banned a lot. What about casting Saudi tournament for LOL? I mean, I have consulted with ESL after they were bought by the Saudis, so technically I have taken Saudi money, even though I signed a contract before that happened. And I did not, I haven't consulted with them since 2022. Um, I'm not going to say no. Would I take, would I do it for a million dollars? Yes. <laughs> would, would I do it for 50,000? No. He's farming all his camps and you know what I mean? You know, it's about finding those perfect windows on when to skip a camp. There are also a lot of people that I like working with at ESL. Something happen for your team and face it. You kind of just become a little bit used to so. you're not finding any angles and you're just farming. It's not only about speed, the efficiency is equally exactly. as important. You've still got to have some presence, some pressure. You can see here What do you do as a job right now? Uh make content and sell ads against it and run Last Free Nation the company? Like you're already saying, they're both big and consult that's what I do. Holy moly. Somebody pushed the wrong button. All right, so let's take a look at how this lane is going, because we, we actually, I haven't seen a new a game on this patch with the Karma yet. So this is third wave coming in right now. This is a pretty typical third wave crash. 
There's a third wave crash in the bot side. You know, wave clear of Bard Ezreal going to be absolute garbage, so no surprise to see an early crash. Ole Bard. I think Ole is fucking great, guys. Ole is like low key one of the best players that LCS has ever had. <laughs> Thank you, Lifestir, for your tier one subscription. It means a lot. If only the rest of you were as generous. It's tragic. Hearts of Stone, all of you in chat. Except for those of you who have subscribed. Oh, Chuck Dono. Sorry. My Dono is scuffed. My Dono is scuffed. Sorry, guys. But thank you for the uh, heads up. You guys don't have to Dono, by the way. You can just ask me questions in chat and I'll answer. Or subscribe. That's fine. How you're mentioning tactical being behind. This is your expectation locking in the champions you did in the draft. So they're saying, all right. Ah, hello from FM Korea. Can I get your blessing to translate your latest episode of the Monty and Wolf show? Yeah, of course. Hey, FM Korea. Say hi to the Korean fans for me. And, and I want this to be very specific. Okay, FM Korea. All right, FM Korea. I need you to translate this for me. Okay. I want you to say that Monty says to T1 fans to stop being giant babies. If you could tell them that, I'd love it. So they're saying, all right, we know the tactical when he's ahead, that's generally our best chance. But if we're setting him behind, again, I have to highlight this pressure on Ole to make something happen. <laughs> I will translate that, but I love this. <laughs> but... <laughs> I know what you're going to say. The thing is, FM Korea, I just don't care. <laughs> you you think I care, but I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> All right, brother. <laughs> it's too fun, guys. But yeah, go ahead. Translate the latest Monty and Wolf show. Also, you can say, I think T1 is really good. Top two team in the world. Tell them, tell them, tell them to get me a truck. Tell them to truck Monty. But thank you for asking, FM Korea. I do appreciate asking, but just so you know, you guys can translate whatever shows you want. Anytime you want, you don't have to make donations. Go go for it. We know the tactical when he's ahead, that's generally our best chance. But if we're setting him behind, again, I have to highlight this pressure on Ole to make something happen in the trade-off. And look how Romeo is playing. He really is saying, okay, I, I don't have a camp up right now. I'm just going to be hovering mask. He already went mid once. Just throws the shield on mask. Mask steps forward. Pokes Jojo out. Jojo TP's back. Uh, and, you know, he's trying to make sure he's covering his mid laner as much as possible. Clearly, he's most worried about Blabber attacking mask out of his lanes for now. Yeah. So, you know, that is where he's going to be spending his time hovering. You can see Jojo, though, already has an early null magic mantle. Whether he's actually going to go towards Hexdrinker and be that defensive or not, I'm not sure. Um, but it is AP, you know, in the mid lane and AP in the jungle. So it's all going to be magic damage that is attacking him. Yeah. Even the Bard, if he roams up, also magic damage. So getting some early MR is going to allow him to kind of farm comfortably. I already touched on the, the rune setup. All right, so good early pressure here from C9. They have a lot of jungle agency at the moment, which is kind of what they want. Like, you know, you'd think that this would be a good situation. All three lane pressure, freeing up Blabber to be aggressive on the map. You know, possibility of getting some good collapses. Rel way up in CS. You like Power Spike a lot? Thank you very much, Chicken Winger. 
Do you prefer on hit or lethality to Varus? Depends on uh, depends on the composition. In this case, like because we're gonna have some squishier targets, and I assume Castle's gonna build lethality onto Aatrox. Um, even if he didn't, let's be real. Lethality probably better on Varus here. What do you see as the main problem so far? Well, that's what we're discovering, Dropbot Mewtwo. We're on a voyage of discovery together. I haven't seen these games, so I don't know the answer to that question yet. Uh, we are in the process of forming our opinion. I know you guys love Reddit, and what happens on Reddit is that everyone forms their opinion without ha actually having seen or read the content, but I don't do that. I actually watch the content or read things and then form my opinion. It's crazy on the internet, I know. But maybe by doing this, I can actually be, you know, a good example to you guys. That's the hope. Greetings from the Philippines. Hello. Hope you're enjoying a nice Philippine morning. No, he's not, Azale. He's not going some AP. He's just getting an Oblivion Orb because it's... Castle is post-6. So, one of the issues that we might see is just kind of a fall, like, basically the longer this game, game goes on, the more effective for Immortals armor items are going to be, because even though there's a base amount of AP with the Udyr and the, um, and the Karma, like, because it's support and because Udyr's going to be, op, you know, optimizing for a tank build, the, the AP damage is going to be less relevant in the late game for Cloud9. And because Ber Berserker's also not dealing, uh, he's not on hit, Varus, so he's more, you know, upfront lethality AD as opposed to have putting out as much mixed damage as an on hit build would do. Right? Because you're you're gonna get fewer um, stack procs from this version of Varus. So there is that that angle to things as well. Is that the scaling? It's not necessarily because of the champions, but because of the builds and the overall emphasis on double AD carry. That in the long game, IMT has an easier way to monetize or to uh, itemize. Uh, double pink water. I mean, this is just such a strong lane position to be in. So it's it's basically just carte blanche to do whatever you want. You're on the side of Cloud Nine. Ends up ahead in farm regardless because he has so much early laning power. Well, 
still about a thousand gold lead here for C9. We've got 10 seconds farm. until the second set of grub spawns. You can already see both junglers heading towards that area. The on my way ping there in blue shows the Cloud9 has this as the plan. <sighs> Why do we still not have a grub counter on LCS overlay? Shit's so annoying, actually. And put themselves in a full six grub take. I mean, I think there's just no real way that they're going to be able to contest this. I think they're a little bit too late, but we'll see if they can get there in time to do something. Armeo is trying to go no. in, but they're all gone. Already secured the power of the Rel and the Udir just burning them away. Immortals recognized they wanted to try to get in there. But like I said, the map state, man, it was just too Cloud9 favored. Absolutely. It was really Cloud9 favored. They have double pushing solo lane. I mean, there's nothing to hate about what Cloud9's doing right now. They're getting incremental advantages. You know, they can start playing for Dragon Soul. Jojo. It'd be a difficult kill to get. Jojo already paying respect, has him backing off. And let's be honest, Jojo is used to getting camps, right? Like when he played last Why do we not have a dragon timer? What the fuck is going on with this overlay? Guys. The jungler will be constantly there. The bot laners will be roaming up. But the difference is Welcome to America, where you can afford twelve casters and no grub counter and no dragon timer. The rest of the map just kinda wins, right? Everything is uh, they, to be fair, LCS did lay off. I saw on Twitter somebody saying that they were the UI designer, and they were laid off. So it's possible that LCS just literally can't fix this problem because they fired the person who does it. Not really going to matter. He's building more defensive. He's playing more defensive, knowing that the other players on his team are getting ahead, are securing those advantages. Oh, and it's a 1K gold they added the grub counter. I'm blind. Sorry, guys. It's the first dragon as well. So Cloud9, you know, really dictates. You're right. And you can see in the inventory, the sheen being completed for Fudge tells me that we're looking at an Iceborne Gauntlet. First yeah. item here for the Udyr to answer the... I'm just used to it not being there, and I, I didn't look. And I were talking a little see? Bit this, is, this is why, before we form opinions, we look. Case in point, guys. I'm guilty. Dragon timer top left? No, that's the Herald timer. So it's very easy to chunk someone to 50%. And pretty much always get the bonus damage with the active, so... It has become very, very popular. You know, it is a powerful item, not only for the wave care, but also for that burst damage. And now with six grubs here, this just gets harder and harder to defend. The Void Mate's going to be spawning out from both players. We are down to only one plate remaining, and there is still a minute and a half for them to kill it. So, unless there's some sort of a... <laughs> bot lane is fine. How the fuck we lose? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look how many plates they've gotten. This has been an incremental uh, game of incremental advantages. They have, they have a lot of advantages right now, C9. You know... You couldn't ask for more. Having a very strong siege composition with good disengage, so double AD carry with a karma to get you out of trouble and a strong front line with six void grubs should mean siege heaven. Guys, this is great. You can also split with Trist. You should be you should be loving it. Amazing. Amazing. Now you can transition to the mid lane. Put Jojo Pion in, in a side lane. Put Jojo Pion top. Udyr bot. Right? You know, set up for Drake, then reassign your lanes. No. We're just going to give up Drake? Why are we giving up Drake? Why, why are we just giving up Drake? You have 40 seconds to get plates. That's not enough time. You're going to get two plates? I, I don't know about this. I feel like... I feel like you reassign lanes to Udyr bot like this, but you first contest Drake, then you put your duo here, Trist here, Udyr here. Like, I I don't really know why you just give that up for free. Because if you look at the game state, okay, so you take the turret. You know, you recall. You have a 1,400 gold advantage on your AD carry. You have a 500, 400 here on your support. Uh, you're even in mid. Jungle has a slight advantage. Top has a slight advantage. So it feels like I mean, it was, it was after your recall, 
there's a good opportunity to push out mid, send Udyr bot. Because remember, your wave is pushing. Like, this is a pretty advantageous situation. Headset I'm using is an Audio-Technica M50X. I haven't done JDG LNG yet. So, when we, when we look at this, like, Fudge is thinking about contesting, but they actually just go for more plates, whereas I feel like the the issue with this situation is again it's not necessarily because of the champions but because of the composition you are worried about ap having less value in the late game so that armor is strong for imt right because the scaling AP may not be there because you're, one of your APs is a support, so not a lot of items, and Udyr isn't going to be itemizing for significant amounts of AP damage. And this is lethality, not on hit Ferris. So, what are we doing? That means that stacking Drakes and trying to accelerate the game is pretty important. It's far more important, in my opinion, for Cloud9 to get this Drake than it is for them to maybe take two plates. Because realistically, after you're done contesting here for the Drake, and you know you have all your ults, you got everything up, there's no reason not to do this, you send Udyr here, you can take, you can add pressure with Karma Varus, and then you split with the Trist. But instead, there's no contest, despite the fact that this is a pretty advantageous map situation. And, you know, Triss was pushed in a little bit, but you can solve that by having the Varus and Karma quickly push out the mid lane. So I don't think this is worth it. What? What the fuck is JoJo doing? Like, you know they're a Drake guy. He's literally greeting for CS. Like, he has rocket jump? I can see it. I can see that it's not on cooldown. He tried he tried to buffer it. That's the animation. He also had flash up, guys. Jojo in trouble potentially. Jojo's stuck in a stasis. Tries to jump away. Shockwave still hits him. Immortals try. He tried to use W. Damage just quite, but over the top, the true shot barrage gets first blood for tactical. Yeah, they get that first blood. He tried to W and he was too late. You can't buffer that? Ah, okay. Medios, Sneaky Medios and DL had to go into custom. You can't buffer that? I mean, there should be enough time for him to jump that. And he should have flashed it, obviously. But he tried. You can see the animation start. But you just, like, regardless of whether you can buffer it or not, guys, you know they're there. Why? What are we fucking doing? What are we fucking doing? Greeting for CS in the mid lane. Why aren't we flashing when we're caught? Because now, now you are going to take a lot of damage to your mid lane turret. It's just cocky. So you actually now traded. Oh, there's another plate. How many plates they get? They did get three. They did get two plates. Three plates. Three plates. They got three plates. So that's pretty good. But you lost a kill for it and you lost the Drake. Yeah, these uh, these sh Ivern shields and brushes are very annoying. Vulcan has to flash for this too. Blabber comes in and uh, you know, uh, you know, he, uh, he just misses everything.
forces Armeo's flash. Terrible engage, though. Castle attempted to TP this as well. Three plates, in fact, that go down on top side, though, so they do get the kill, but Blabber's going in. Blabber ready to lead the charge. So this is almost very bad because Blabber whiffed his engage. It was Fudge that saved this by stunning him. Serpent's Varus miss. Yeah, Serpent's Fang on Varus. Fair enough. We have seen, uh, I have seen in Korea a bunch of Varus's build, you know, Serpent's Fang late game on against shield compositions. But yeah, versus Ori Ivern seems like it's pretty mandatory. No more flash engage for Rel. They should just give this up. They probably wanted to open topside for better Herald position. That's why JoJo is trying to push mid. I mean, that's that's fine, but you can have your cake and eat it too there. You can have your cake and eat it too. You can actually just get... You can actually just get Drake and then transition into this exact setup. That's my point. They got three plates for it, but that was the trade. They, they traded three plates for Dra Drake and a kill. That's what they got. And instead, they also lost Harold. So Serpent's Fang actually seconds here on Vera, so he does end up purchasing it. Seems like this is pretty good value. Drake is going to spawn in about 20 seconds. 
Baron still about two minutes away as Daisy is summoned up in the mid lane. Immortal stuck underneath the tier one turret for now as C9 establishes vision in the bot side river. So we can check in on the Oblivion Orb. We'll call the laning phase done. Uh, yeah. 324 healing reduced and 11. So now they're actually going to start to. Regen reduced, so... Okay, so about four <sighs> Papa, where's the dragon timer? <laughs> what is going on? Obviously, doing too much. You know, maybe it'll get something done throughout the rest of the game. It's a pretty cheap component. He didn't fully commit into the rest of it. And he's clearly not going for Okay, Cloud9 finally using their lane pushing. Overlay bug quality. I just call it Dark Souls. I really like you call it Moonfire Cape, and now that's yeah. just, that, <laughs> that's, just that's all. I that's a better name. Moonfire Cape is objectively a better name oh, for Hollow Radiance. Oh. Hold on, I what? I just call it Dark Souls. I really oh like my God! Cape, now that's yeah. just Blabber, you're playing Rel with Smite. This is illegal. <laughs> that's illegal. That's oh, fucking illegal. Oh. Hold on, I completely. We were joking about a cape. I completely missed the true shot barrage. What? Done from tactical. Sometimes you just get a little bit too comfortable thinking, oh yeah, we have to have this secured. <laughs> Immortals, hey, they're happy to say that. Cape is really exciting. People are cheering. He even smited? <laughs> well, hey, tactical, you're happy to take that. This what? He's got the one kill of the game so far. Let's take another look at how it went down. Blabber just farming this up. If the summoner spells in the replay they are, are, are correct, correct. On, the, on the left. So he okay. does have the smite. Um, did he just not use it? Oh, he just smote early. Oh, his Q damage didn't connect, right? Cause he his Q didn't connect, guys. The the true shot barrage hit it before his Q did. He was trying to go for the for the oh the Q first smite with the Q smite, but his Q didn't go through. That is so crazy. That is that is the timing on that is so insane. Actually, that is that is actually just unlucky. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad? Not that bad, guys. That's just giga unlucky. Yes, it's better to Q-Smite. Yes, it is better to Q-Smite, guys. It is better to Q-Smite. But still, like, come on. What are the odds? The odds of that happening are astronomically low. Sometimes he'll miss. Sometimes he won't combo the skills together correctly. And hey, it's worth it. Be hilarious if he stole that Gromp too. Tactical almost stealing away the Gromp from him as well. Oh, insult to injury. That's actually okay. Check tactical flash. Wait, wait. Yeah, what's going on? Oh, his Q damage didn't connect, right? Because he was doing. Where did he flash? Yeah, we have to have it secured. Immortals. Hey, they're happy to take that. Moonfire Cape is really exciting. People are cheering for that. <laughs> well, hey, Tactical, you're happy to take that one. This is the That's guy. Actually pretty big. He's got the one kill of the game so far. I guess we just don't know. It went down. Blabber just farming this up. If the summoner spells in the replay, they are uh, for the, oh, the Q first smite. with the Q smite, but his Q didn't go through, so a little bit of a mistiming there from Blabber. Maybe got a bit nervous when he saw that True Shot Barrage flying it over top. Yeah, so it must have been, must have been an engage mid. And, uh, it looks like he probably, if I had to guess, guys, he probably flashed Chains of Corruption, right? Detective work says that might be true. Uh, may have been enough to actually kill because you do have really good secure on rel um, because of that. Bonus but see, now you really want that Drake back. You know what I mean, guys? Because here's the thing about this game. Now you really want that Drake back. Because if you had gotten the Drake earlier, then they wouldn't be stacking three fucking mountain drakes to get to mountain soul when you have double 80 carry and armor has such great value um, plus you're, you know, you're passive and everything so a lot of damage that does come down but obviously nice steal there from Daxel. that's why i always like to see players if you've got a berserker flash to ult yeah it must have been a trade flash for flash with uh chains of corruption that's that's a good guess guys good job sherlock holmes chat Okay, this guy's hacking. Can't, can't lose. What's going on here? Dragon. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. People yeah. fight over dragons. That's Scuttle. the real thing. That's where we draw the line. Right. Yeah, yeah. We can't be losing scuttles. Can't be losing gromps. Yeah. 
Yes, you are the, the most erudite Twitch chat. Welcome back, Dilf Zaddy. <laughs> Dilf Zaddy's Unite on Monty's stream. They're going to be pretty happy uh, about this. You know, the gold lead has not really been extending. The fact that they actually stole away that dragon. It's not like Cloud9 is, is anywhere even remote. Ezreal should just cleanse Arcane Shift Verisult. He may not have had Shift up, if I had to guess. You can buffer Triss with Bard R. Uh, that's, people are saying, no, you can't, and that Double Lift Meteos and Sneaky tried it. So I will trust that, I guess. C9 can't progress games if enemy doesn't run into them, says Papa Smithy. It's just weird because it seems actually their win conditions are so clear this game, especially that they have the six void grubs. With this composition, like their siege is insane. Why can't they take down mid lane? Why is Udir in mid? What are these lane assignments? Why are there four people on top? Okay, TP. Udir TP to tier two instead of TPing to tier one. Here, okay. Uh huh. Yep. When a top team loses, mm -hmm. questionable. Right? Because they're really going to be like, all right, guys, no more trolling. Time to take it serious. Time to really buckle down. I mean, I, I don't hate the TP. But objectively, everybody's recalling. JoJo just recalled. This turret's at full HP. This one's actually going to die. Just TP over to that side. Jojo was bought for defense. No, he wasn't. He was he was saying he's backing off turret. He literally is at bot and then backs off for reasons that I don't understand. I guess he's worried about Bard and a possible dive, which is not unreasonable. He he actually rocket jumps out. He doesn't have vision, so he's concerned about Ivern uh, Bard dive, and he recalls. But I, they just, I don't think they take down that tier two. C9 has been pretty good at actually bouncing back. You know, you look at this since spring 2022. After a loss, 17 and 5 is their record. Of course, their overall record is also just good. Really good. So, right. The, the, you know, but it, it is kind of one of those things where when a top team loses, you often don't want to be the next person to actually play them, right? Because yeah. they're really going to be like, all right, guys, no more trolling. Time to take it serious. Time to really buckle down. Um, but Immortal's hanging in there pretty damn well. I mean, unless I'm sorely mistaken, there's still never been a perfect season in the regular nope. season of LCS. And we've had some really strong teams in multiple different splits, but it's just so easy to get confident, to let that ego go a little bit. It's almost like super weeks make it very difficult to have a, re a perfect regular season. It's almost like the format is designed so that it creates disruptions in the play of good teams. Hmm. Weird. Still about that 2000 gold lead that it has been for a while and I fully agree with you if you're immortal. It's almost like best of ones create variants. I don't know, guys. Zerker took it when plates were still up. That shot him up to this 2000 gold lead and that's where it's been 49ers Chiefs Niners. I'm a Broncos fan, man. I can't have the Chiefs win any more Super Bowls. It's illegal. He's going for that support itemization, but Blabber's doing the exact same thing, right? He is doing tank support itemization, but he's got a locket. There's lots of AOE damage that is going to be coming through from Ezra Lal, from Shockwave, etc. He also does have... Um, <laughs> Don't blame the format for C9 bad play. <laughs> I'm not. Obviously, this C9, I think, would lose BO3s, but... Best side in the league. Um, 
Well, I think uh, I think Kittle has been better than Kelsey this season, maybe. Especially towards the end. Kelsey fell off. I had him in fantasy, I know. <laughs> he is the only receiver on the Chiefs, though, that doesn't have butter fingers. Um, Laporta, as a rookie, quietly. not to, I shouldn't say quietly. Very good. Loudly very good on the Lions. Okay, so this is the battle for the mid lane wave in preparation of spawning of Drake. Okay. There is no Aatrox flank, though. Good ch good chunk, though. I mean, this should mean that they just get Drake. Jojo? He was interrupted. Has to flash. Kelsey's been the best tight end in the playoffs. Yeah, it's a good point. Very good chunks. Yep, you have the angle. They can't really do Baron right now. Dude, Ole's good. Ole's a really good player. You don't get to, like, repeatedly be, you know, top three on the Korean server. Especially as support. Without being very good. He's, like, criminally underrated, in my opinion. Like, you know, he's better than Core right now. <laughs> Always more well well rounded than Ignar. Absolutely is. The C9 outscaled here. Well, it's the combo of having the lethality Varus. It's just really the armor value. And the two mountain drakes. So I mean Like I said earlier, I'm not sure if I think it's actual outscaling or just like double AD carry with lethality, Varus, Tristana, and a lack of AP damage, right? So it's not that these champions can't scale scale well. It's just that they're not going to this game, if that makes sense. Because armor has such a high value. On IMT side. Just sitting around and waiting for that Sejuani. You need to chunk people out. You need to make things happen. So it puts a lot of pressure on him. But I think that is something that he can make happen. We've seen him be able to carry games for this team over the last year or so so we'll see if he can do it today it would be a massive win for mortals if they can make it happen and it would be a bit of a shock for cloud nine this team that has come in unanimously power ranked number one pretty much against immortals who are basically unanimously power ranked number eight in the league if yep. you lose that after dropping to shopify people are going to start having some questions you know the shopify game people are willing to say ah it's just a blip on the radar ah maybe they shouldn't pick pain mid this or that oh bot lane dive went bad but the reality is, you drop that out of the game, they're not going to be overlooking it. Ooh, tactical. Immediately having a cleanse there as Blaver hit him with the shattering strike over the wall. But now Blaver's in danger. Locked up by the root collar. Finds a stunner to Ole, but now ready to disengage. Castle oh, coming in over the wall. Jojo and Blaver both are going to be stuck together. They disengage. They can escape the binding in time. Tactical so low. Immortals do not want to chase this any further. But Jojo and Blabber also getting bound up like that. Blabber with no flash available to use means C9 is also not feeling particularly strong. Exactly. It's also the the TP coming off of Fudge plus that flash from Blabber. Obviously, he used to engage. So they do get the cleanse off tactical. But at the end of the day, you've got that TP back. You got that flash back. So Immortals gonna be feeling okay about it as long as tactical can stay safe. 
until the cleanse comes back up because that is going to be the question because if you get hit by a Vera Assault or something like that, he's going to instantly die and then Cloud9 can maybe take that Baron and really try to close this game out. Um, but until then, it is just Immortals waiting towards this next dragon, trying to get that Mountain Soul. And it's Cloud9 trying to find Windows because they've been very passive. I think felt that they would maybe be able to... Just join stream. Can you give me the TLDR on what's wrong, Cloud9? My guy. We haven't finished doing our homework yet. Okay? You're, you're asking to copy my homework, but I haven't finished the homework yet. This is the homework. <laughs> what the fuck, man? If I knew the answer, I wouldn't be looking at these games. <laughs> Here's what you want, guy. Here, here you go. You can copy my assignment. My assignment will be on my YouTube channel tomorrow with the answer to that question. This guy's gonna hurt. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of damage in the Jesus Christ, you guys. Sure. It's also worth noting that it is gonna be the blood song for Olay. So he wants that exposed weakness, the additional damage that can come through, you know, on the spell blade hit. So he's prioritizing that. You're trying to find someone with the ult, hit them with the Q, get the auto out uh, for that bonus damage with the Sheen proc, and also amplifying the damage of your teammates. You know, the reason why I do these streams is because I can do them while I have to review these VODs anyway. These guys are getting really, really strong, and it's going to be all down to execution at this point in the game. It's also worth noting that when you're playing Lethality Varus, that is much weaker against the mountain soul against the flat armor that you're going to be getting from getting these individual dragons that does kind of hurt uh his ability to really poke people down in this game with shojin completed as the third full item for tacticals ezreal the q cooldown is now 2.43 seconds and on hit it reduces all cooldowns by one and a half so as long as he is hitting you hell. on anything even if it's just these frontline guys that it doesn't do significant damage to you're shooting off the q every second yep. lots of damage potential there if tactical is on point with his aim yeah you just have to be constantly dodging out on those it becomes very difficult and kind of even mentally taxing a little bit to have to deal with that mass he knows jojo is going to make that move over towards top lane to here watch the fly the games too we're going to watch one fly game today and we may watch the other two tomorrow but i want to get through jdg lng today we'll see Maybe, maybe I'll change my mind and it'll just be LCS day. I'll see what you guys want when we're done with Cloud9. Castle really trying to make that work, but the rocket jump is back off cooldown. Little awkward, little awkward on the re-engage there. I think you just take the win that Mask gets away. Now you're going to give away Soul. It's actually so dumb. Man, the Drake timer has just been ignored by both teams. Can we discuss this? Can we discuss this, guys? Okay, so there there is a blocker right here, obviously, but Oriana does not have to go in on this wave, right? Oriana can leave with TP up during this circumstance. And instead, I think they didn't believe that JoJo was here, to be fair, because there's a pink ward here and they don't know. I think they think that everyone was the last time JoJo showed. I think they think that everybody on C9 is over here because they don't want IMT to get soul. So because vision control is, is kind of bad, deep right now for IMT, they think, and he checks the brush, he thinks that it's actually safe and he looks... But he doesn't see JoJo because JoJo's behind the wall. So he he thinks everybody, you know, the Tristan is over here somewhere in the darkness. And that's why Mask walks up on this turret. It's an understandable mistake, but it's still not worth it. 
Uh, because what you should be doing here, in my opinion, for Immortals is like if the wave is already pushed into the tower, then you can actually back off and threaten Baron and force them to come to you or take, you know, take this dragon. What you're trying to do here is trade Drake for Baron, I think, if you're Immortals. a little bit to have to deal with that mass. No, nobody sees nobody sees Jojo. Pretty sure. You just have to be constantly dodging out on those. It becomes No. Armeo doesn't see Jojo for sure. Nobody sees him. This is a pretty sneaky play by Jojo. You can see right now. It's pretty clever. But don't take this risk also. And trying to get damage down, but Jojo's going to go in. Jojo wants mass. Give him the 1v1. Mass drops the shockwave after flash back over the wall, but Jojo's And at this point in time, like you just got to bail. He's got a bail on this. You can you can use Bard ult. You know. Does Jojo actually get hit by Bard Q? Yeah, he did. So it's a nice Q. That's why they follow up on this, I think, because Jojo's stunned. But they just don't have the the chain CC. And Castle should not have gone forward, obviously. He thought he could get he thought he could kill Jojo because Ole landed the Bard stun, but Nope. So that honestly is a pretty sneaky and pretty clever play by Cloud9, but IMT should not be taking that risk. They should be backing off after wave crashes into tier two and trying to threaten Baron. Yeah. They're just going to try and cross map instead. They lost control of Baron. So Cloud9 really just struggling here because they, they now just constantly have to play on their back foot for Soul. Blabber's rel engages have been really underwhelming. Like, he, he just blows his load to either, like, miss it or get one person. Or he has no TP, though. Nice, he sees him on the ward, guys. So they think that this is a safe place to recall because there's a pink ward here, but they actually, this is right outside of line of vision. I mean, JoJo can't do anything else besides W, guys, because he has no flash that time. So that was literally the only thing he could do that time. It wasn't like the one in mid lane. And yes, as we've discovered, guys, or as I have been told, it isn't bufferable. I did not know that. That is what you are saying. I believe you. Yeah, 
How good has Olay been this game, though? I feel like he has really been so pivotal for the team. Great with the ultimates. Catches JoJo mid rocket jump, which is the disaster scenario because it cancels your rocket jump, takes the cooldown. He had no flash and no way to stack up the E to get out after this one. This is just really good stuff here. Look at that ward down below. And he placed that ward, I believe, earlier himself as he was actually chasing after JoJo. I mean, I think he... So, and he placed that... This is just really good stuff here. Look at that ward down below. And he placed that ward, I believe, earlier himself. He tried to walk at first, but I don't think you can get out of that, honestly. There. Then Castle comes in over the wall. Tactical timing his ult out as well. Blabber even using the locket, trying to keep him alive, but not able to do it. Olay in trouble. Oh, no. I think you might have just cast a curse, Demazale. Tactical timing his ult out as well. Oh, I guess Olay just gets caught. Locket, no clue how it happened. Not able to do it. Olay in trouble. Gets hit by Chain of Corruption. I think you might have just cast a curse, Dimazale. It has been such a good performance from Olay throughout the game. You have to flash another option. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me too, Papa. I don't think you can actually W that. Especially looking at that one where he W'd a lot faster. C9 feels so confident now to start this Baron up as the rest of Immortals make their approach. Fudge and Vulcan here on the front line. They're going to try to... Now I've seen it a couple times. I think I agree with that. He's, he's engages by by blabber on rel are just so underwhelming like he's not finding the right angles and he's not he's like just blowing his load up front every time and he, he's literally hit zero and one and one person on his rel engages this game The Ole story of quitting cigarettes right before playoffs and then losing is still one of the funniest esports stories. Yeah, he told that on Summoning Inside, guys. It was fucking hilarious. If you guys haven't seen that episode, just go to the part where he talks about, like, when he tried to quit smoking. It's so funny. Until what would be soul for immortals, soul point for C9. Baron up at the same time means that if a team overcommits to the Drake, they could be giving up something very valuable as a trade, too. This map state is now incredibly interesting, and I'm so curious to see how immortals specifically will pilot this. I say it all the time when we have one of these matchups between a team at the top of the standings and a team at the bottom. These are the situations where the bottom tier teams usually struggle more as oh, Mask is going to be caught out by the chains of corruption, but immediately follows it up here with the stasis. Now, how is C9 going to follow it? These are the situations where the bottom tier Positioning is pretty janky for this guy. It's like Mask gets caught by chains of corruption. There's no real attempt here for any kind of Aatrox flank. Like, he's actually just straight playing front line. Ole pops the ult out. Does Mask not get hit by that? Interesting. All right, so Mask pops Zonia's, which apparently, I guess I didn't know this, guys. If you stasis a stasis champion, it doesn't extend the stasis to the end of... It makes sense that it doesn't do this, but I had never thought about it. It doesn't extend the stasis to the end of the Bartle. The stasis just ends, and Mask can flash out while the other stasis is still going on. Yeah, it makes sense because you're, you're basically taken out of the game, right? But it's not an interaction that I've seen a whole lot. Ole also has a pretty clutch stun on the flank here. Takes Vulcan out of it. Where's Blabber's engaging? I want to watch his rail. 
Yeah, his engage just gets down yet, so he eventually just hits one person. Ole has a nice reaction to that. Tactical has to flash out, actually. Or he, uh, ease out, rather. Yeah, somebody mentioned earlier that, um, you know, a lot of the armor issues that I mentioned earlier may not actually be happening. Like, there's some armor on the bard, which is providing value, but nobody else is really purchasing any armor in this game, or not a lot of it at the very least. So it may not be that big of a concern when it comes to Fudge having to purchase more items. I think more of the issue, now that I look at this, is, is like once Chain of Corruption is down and once Rel Ult is down, how do you engage? You know, the chase down's pretty big, potentially, from Immortals, because they can speed people up with Ori. Yeah, the, the shields, even with the Serpent's Fang, the shields and the speed on Ezreal, and now that he has Mountain Soul, it's really annoying. Uh, this is just desperation from C9. Now that the those three mountain drakes, basically double AD composition, it's gonna be so hard to deal any actual damage to them. Castle finally on the flank. Yes, love to see it. What's JoJo doing in this fight? He actually just gets exhausted. By Ole. Chains of Corruption misses. Nice shockwave on a JoJo. JoJo just holding Flash way too long this game, honestly. He actually just straight walks into Baron damage and shockwave. Ugh, get me out. He literally just walked into Ori Ball. Immortals took a lot of advantages from JoJo's deaths. The first one was particularly bad because they, they just didn't, they traded down as a result of that. And lane assignments were really weird. No, they never really got to group up and do any kind of siege. 